Madam President, distinguished delegates, I am honoured to speak to you at this esteemed Human Rights Conference Council on behalf of the Commonwealth. We are a 54-nation intergovernmental organisation of independent sovereign states voluntarily coming together to cooperate and pursue and uphold common values of democracy, non-discrimination, gender equality and sustainable development. The Commonwealth spans all continents and is home to 2.4 billion people of all races and religions with great cultural diversity. Uniquely, we have 32 small states as our members, making the Commonwealth truly global and inclusive. We have nine Commonwealth member states serving this council, including Fiji and the Bahamas, the first council members from their respective regions. We continue to work with the Office of the High Commissioner of Human Rights to build the capacity of trust fund delegates from least developed countries and small island developing states to empower them to promote human rights in their countries as well as to make the Council a more inclusive body in which our small states exercise a stronger voice. Increasingly, more small states articulate their positions in discourses on human rights, trade, health and other international matters as we work with them to reduce capacity constraints, provide technical advice and support them to meet their commitments on human rights. We will continue to work with small states to increase their contribution to and participation in the work of this Council. I would like to thank the United Kingdom for their support which has allowed us to provide human rights advisors and technical expertise to our small states with and without the mission in Geneva. I also thank Switzerland, Singapore, India, New Zealand and Australia for their financial contributions that have made it possible for the Commonwealth Small States Office to provide affordable space and facilities to our small member states. Madam President, the technical assistance we provide through our small states office has led to greater fulfillment of international reporting obligations by Commonwealth small states. In one year since I last spoke in this room, Dominica, the Gambia, Kiribati, Guyana, Grenada, and St. Vincent and the Grenadines have successfully reported on international, uh, two international mechanisms with Commonwealth support. Our assistance has also resulted in commitments by member states to establish and or strengthen national mechanisms for reporting and follow-up. Madam President, we are tackling intransigent challenges with the benefits of science to embrace the possibility of a better future for posterity. This is possible if we work together in a multilateral system. Nothing better illustrates the urgent need to strengthen the multilateral system than the existential threat climate change poses to the world. This is an undeniable human rights challenge. The stark reality for many small states is that their people are losing lives, facing malnutrition, unable to find clean water, and their homes are disappearing right before our eyes. From the devastation of Hurricane Dorian in the Bahamas last year, to the wrath of bushfires in Australia, from severe drought in Namibia, to islands in and undated uh, with king tides in Kiribati. Climate change is a threat to the world and an emergency for our small states. 
the Commonwealth will work assiduously with states, communities, civil society and young people to advocate for changes in policies, modification of behavior and curbs in pollution to significantly reverse the damage to our environment and ensure climate justice, especially for small, vulnerable states. In June this year, we will host the Commonwealth Heads of Government meeting, Chogham, in Kigali, Rwanda, under the theme, Delivering a Common Future, Connecting, Innovating, Transforming. At Chogham, we will seek ways to improve inclusive governance where all persons have an opportunity without discrimination to actively contribute to nation building. Madam President, 2020 marks the 25th anniversary of the Beijing Declaration and Platform for Action. Yet women in virtually all countries remain victims of discrimination to varying degrees in employment, nationality, resource ownership, commercial dealings, access to justice, sexual and reproductive health, as well as in family life. We must envisage and devise an equitable future for girls and women that enables them to achieve that to which they aspire. To, in, by enacting policy reforms, providing adequate resources, increasing awareness on discrimination and curbing harmful practices. Marginalized communities such as the LGBTI persons and indigenous peoples are too often left on the margins of efforts to advance human rights and inclusive development. Recognizing the intersectional barriers to inclusive development and the multiple vulnerabilities that affect individuals, this year's Commonwealth theme is delivering a common future. This future cannot be common without being inherently inclusive. Simply put, we have to respect the dignity and equality of all citizens in the Commonwealth family. Development and human rights go hand in hand. Accordingly, human rights and efforts to eliminate poverty are mutually reinforcing, each instrumental to the achievement of the other. Human rights standards offer a normative framework that should guide the design and implementation of policies to reduce poverty, achieve the SDGs, and bring to the fore those who have traditionally been left behind. Madam President, I am proud to say that the Commonwealth will continue doing its part and that human rights will remain central to all that the Commonwealth is and does. To this end, we remain steadfast in our commitment to support member states to improve access to justice through strengthening national human rights institutions, ensuring independent judiciaries, improving cap capacity of officials to apply human rights standards and reducing financial and bureaucratic barriers for people to access police, administrative officers and courts. Madam President, Distinguished delegates, I thank you.